I want to talk about the time Ross Ellenhorn at um, the program Ellenhorn, formerly known as Prakash Ellenhorn, squandered a glimmer of hope I had in a very, very dark time. And how what he says shows that he knows better than this and what he did was incredibly hypocritical, um, incredibly like fake based on what he said and how I am beyond disappointed. In fact, I have not only resentment, but contempt for his actions. And, okay, he talks about, like, how it's wrong to la just label people, dismiss them, take away their agency, right? He talks about all this. As well as the importance of having a good um, alliance with um, one's treaters. Um, and by the way, this is, um, this is stuff I had, I had, um, I had looked up him before I actually contacted him. So I had the psychiatrist, Matthew uh, Bernstein at the time, who I was trying to not have. And I've mentioned some of those reasons, but yeah. So and I tried every which way, right? Like I tried being, trying to be very diplomatic, um, going as far as even sticking my neck out and like um, throwing myself under the bus a bit, but I didn't really care. I mean, I, yeah, I, it was, it was detrimental to me to have him, so whatever, I just kind of put my ego on the shelf for a bit at times, and I was like, yeah, we're just not a good match, I'm sure you're good for some people, and then, no, still, oh, I want to, like, still, just like a brick wall, right, like, nothing could get through, and that might be, like, from narcissism and mind blindness, and whatever, but and just ego, his ego, even the thing is, I tried to go around his e ego and really, I said, you know, people have said I'm very difficult before and maybe it won't work out with someone else, but yeah, this is not, and then, right, not working, so I'm like saying, well, this is really detrimental to me, and then to the point, I, re I think I went as far, and then I went and started saying like, being more pointed and saying, trying that approach because I, I I tried multiple approaches right I and I just I stopped seeing him like he can't prescribe he can't like prescribe me stuff if he's not seeing me like he isn't he gonna so I tried that like not seeing him to see maybe okay I'm not she's not seeing me this isn't really good from a legal point of view I'm gonna not and then I went as far as to block um, his email, like, that's where it ended up, but whatever, whatever, so, like, I, things, so, but this, this was, like, um, I was already talking to Ross beforehand about, um, trying to get this switched, and he would, he would label me in his own way, that's not the deal, so much, this, this, um, system can be good I actually found it and I and I've heard another therapist use it much more productively but you say like you're playing the victim which is just like labeling me and it's not it's like um no I deserve to that's self-advocacy in fact I even I tried to work it out with him and then I, I wasn't able to so then I went over and I was to someone else and I was explaining 
why um, I thought it was detrimental to me, why I didn't feel comfortable talking to him. And yeah, I should be allowed to do that. I should be allowed to express why I don't want to see a treater. I should be allowed to pick a treater who I feel comfortable with, okay? Like, I don't deserve to have someone just forced on me like that. Especially something, someone who has, author who has authority over me and in many ways, and also who it's about something um, as far as like wanting to unalive, which is like a problem like that. Like I deserve, if, if we're talking about such personal things and like trauma and whatnot, I deserve to feel comfortable with the person. Like, you can't tell me that's playing the victim. And I even went and talked about the conference and people had said to me, and they seemed pretty genuine, that one of the things I brought up is we should have more choice on who we get because that had been a problem before with certain people, but also some people got to, like, have, some people said, I don't like, heard at least one person say he didn't like a certain staff and he got to pick whereas i heard um bernstein was like a friend um of ross ellen horn um he heard he's his buddy so that might be why too because before i didn't know if he just was like a conflict avoidant because he, he made up some lame excuse like um he didn't want to take administrative role, but okay, no. You have to still have some oversight. Otherwise, you can't be acting like it's the things that are going on are the things you value. Because, yeah, those all look, sound really um, great and all, but what are they? They're plaques, you're a figurehead, it's fake. You know, and yeah, and I don't know how much of it has to do with him being his friend, but yeah, it was utter nonsense. And I'd even argue that like when I went up and I was talking in the conference, the open conference, that I was being more of like the challenger and the type of empowerment dynamics, which that's what you have to use. You use this drama triangle, the empowerment dynamics you can't just be labeling people for the sake of it that's a conversation stopper that's arguably being somewhat of a persecutor right it's kind of like using it to dismiss people using it to this it's not going anywhere it but yeah so i had looked him up which is because i've already, i was having difficulties um discussing with matt bernstein on like he I wasn't getting through to him, so I had, um, knew I had bad interactions with, um, this person, um, Dr. Prakash, who was also a founder at the time, but that is a long story. I'm not getting into it, but I looked up Ross Ellenhorn just to see would, would he be someone who would be worth reaching out to, and he asked me for therapy, which, yeah, he was at least better than the the other therapist person because he at least, like, I could have some negative conversations without automatically jumping to, like, you're playing the victim and blah, 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 be happy all the time. Like, but, yeah, so again, that shows he has the, like, the ability to do better. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's a real letdown to, he's, do this and um he's uh yeah it 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 now it's like he goes up talking about hope like fear of hope blah 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 i think on like i mean i'm always disappointed as well so that might be why when i get a glimmer of hope sometimes i'm like more desperate for it because i already i mean yeah it leads to me end up i don't have much hope to necessarily carry me through and even the wanting to unalive, I feel like, took root in me very much in having a hope that that would be the solution to, like, my problems from a very young age. So there's stuff with that as well, but definitely I do, 
I am somewhat desperate for hope, so it's kind of the bit of difference what he talks about. But so it's, but then he like squanders hope, like. So I um. This isn't real. I wasn't really hopeful about this because again, I'm often like hopeless anyway. I test really high in hopelessness tests. Like, um, one of the things at McLean, they said I was likely exaggerating based on just the fact apparently I test higher than average in clinical settings, which even apparently of the like, it was like really like very disturbed patients or very something like that. It said, um, but. Obviously, I have abnormally, um, high amount of hopelessness. That's not surprising based on my actions and how I tried to unalive and just waiting to be unalive and stuff. Like, it's, it's not surprising, but, yeah, so, one, I tried to ask at one point for one of the, um, psychiatrist we saw I saw at the for like when Bernstein was um away who I wasn't like we didn't have a like really a specific connection but it's like that's the thing you don't understand I felt like so desperate to get out of that situation with the whole drinking thing and like I feel like I couldn't talk about my wanting to unalive at all like I like, kind of did but not really because like which I mean that's already something that I don't really feel comfortable talking about anyways. For me, it's like an addiction, um, but it happens to a lot of people at a young age, but people don't take want to take that seriously. I actually found it on an alternative forum, not even through psychiatry, but yeah. So at one point I asked for someone who's, uh, who's like on my same alpha team whatever but I wasn't that much of a connection but then I actually when I was getting the really bad withdrawals like my hand was shaking like I it was one I was having trouble getting my pills because like my hands were, sh were sh so shaking I had like legit tremors like you and like my whole fingers were shaking my hands were shaking my whole body was shaking like I can't even replicate it because it was it's like just like such an it's like an involuntary type of movement but I mean I did see one of uh, the doctors there actually like looking at me and it just looked much more sympathetic and just kind of concerned than anyone was acting at the time so um um, this, uh, it's like, uh, Pam Wine, who's actually looks pretty good, like, I would say, um, like, I don't know, I, I, I like I said, it's just kind of like a glimmer of hope that it could be pretty good, um, because she seemed more, much more caring. She introduced herself to me at one point. It, it was weird. I, I'd asked to interview or not interview, I'd ask to possibly see her as well, because there was a therapist who I got on well with on another team, and she was on that team anyway, and based on when I saw her, I was like, oh wow, she seems, or maybe I asked after she was, I feel like it was before, but somehow, I didn't know if she knew that, but, um, yeah, and then she, yeah, like, it was just type of an impression I got I didn't know I didn't know if it would have worked I was just kind of like yeah I think yeah so that was a kind of a glimmer of hope but um listening to her talk because I did I have I watch it sometimes I look at this place and I'm just like sometimes like oh my god why are you talking about all these good like fine ideas but then you did you you like completely didn't fall through with me so and interestingly enough she the way she spoke 
very, sound very inquisitive, very empathetic, very compassionate. And then it just, all the while, is just pissing me off even more that he couldn't have just let me. And I had to stay in that such a miserable situation because of him. And he could have done something about it. And he didn't. And now all this trauma is even, which he already had, I already had all kinds of trauma. And it was, and he wasn't doing about anything about it. He was letting me be further traumatized. 